back, everybody, for another edition of the Club Cool Podcast. I am your host, Barrett Dudley, and I am joined, as always, on the other side of the table by Mr. Phil Battaglia. What's good, Phil? Hey, man. How we doing? We're doing all right. We are here. We're at the intersection in the Wash Media Studios, brought to you by Wash Media, of course. Got a nice little post-Thanksgiving episode for you today. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, Fear of God's seventh collection, which was recently unveiled. And then a couple of, uh, of news pieces, one relating to Drake and the other to somebody that I, I think is very similar. Same ballpark as Drake. It's George Clooney. A lot in, lot in common with those two. <laughs> um, but yeah. first, uh, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, it was good, man. Yeah? Yeah. We uh, we kept it low-key. Parents came in town. Um, Man, shout out to Swedish Hill. They, they killed it. Did almost. they do it? They really yeah, did it? Yeah, they did it. Okay, that's good. We got that's the turkey, good. the gravy, and the cornbread dressing from them. Yeah. Turkey was really, really good. That's good. Yeah. Cause Easy. W- one of the things that I decided over the course of uh, – of this past Thanksgiving, is that turkey's really not that good? Yeah, I said this on the other on, it's the, not on my other podcast. You're just like, but it's you, 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 the more you think about it, why do we not have like why do we not roast a turkey at other meals? Why do we not do this more often? Mm-hmm. That's because turkey kind of sucks. You did the full bird. I did the full bird. And and and, and uh oh, what happened? Okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it didn't go. It didn't go picture perfect. <laughs> oh yes. Well, actually, I take that back. It did go picture perfect. Uh-huh. It did not go perfect within the beast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. We we talked about how uh, maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I cannot. I honestly don't remember what we say week to week here anymore, Phil. But um, I had been given some advice. I, I had read. Online, I had a recipe up. Everything was like one day per five pounds of the turkey. That's all you need to thaw it. And then my, I talked to my dad, who was like, "That's all kind of bullshit. It needs longer than that. Mm-hmm. The middle of this bird is filled with frozen gizzards and necks and beaks and stuff. You got to get that shit out of there." And I was like, "I'm gonna listen to the internet, not not the guy that's done." Did this you 10 not times. extract anything? So I did not extract anything until the day of. Okay. Which which was a mistake, but I because I didn't want to I didn't want to have a naked bird getting salmonella all over my fridge, Ugh. you know what I mean? So well, I, I was well, like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get up day of Thursday. That's when I'll open this thing. I'll get all the stuff outside of it, or out from out from within. And I did that. And the 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 meat the the exterior of the uh, exterior of the bird of the fowl um, was was thawed. But when I when I was pulling stuff out, very frozen in the cavity. Really. So I was like, well, that's a, maybe that's probably fine. It's, they really deep freeze these things. They don't do. They? they do. Wow. It's like it's it's gonna. And I had done it, like I had thrown in an extra day in the thawing process yeah. and everything. It really wasn't enough. You got to go in there and get that stuff out of the cavity as soon as you can. Because it's still frozen. Because it's still frozen Cold. inside and it's insulated by the. Yep. By the body. Sorry to get gross on you guys here. Whew. These things are gross, by the way. Yeah. They're gross. Uh-huh. Um, so I had the thermometer in the breast, everything. I did. I, I thought it all went well. I thought the bird was cooked. It looked very good. So, you know, I've got some pictures. It, it looks like I, I, did a, I, I was successful. Let the thing rest under the tinfoil, do the whole thing, finally start cutting into it get past the breast, get down into the bottom half of this thing, the thigh, and it's just like red juices everywhere. And I'm like This is after cook? Yeah. And I'm like, oh no. Oh no. I messed this up, didn't I? I screwed it up. I screwed the pooch. So I had to like cut some pieces off of it and like get it all back into the oven. Meanwhile, I told everybody that it was ready, so like the sides are all out. It's a mixed bag. It, up until this point, by the way, everything had gone very smoothly. Yes. Hosting was fine. I really the, the the amazing parts about hosting is that here are the things you don't have to worry about. You can drink as much as you want, and mm-hmm. it's your booze that you chose. Right. Phenomenal. Correct. The second thing is, at every other Thanksgiving that I've been to, I have to be like a little like tentative, um, you know, like uh, uh, um, polite, like, oh, did you do you think can, can we like can, can we get the cow, the Cowboys game on maybe in the other room? Like, turn it on. on. No, it's just on full from blast. the get go. Football is on all day long. Yeah. My house, my rules, <laughs> and so I really enjoyed that part as well. Get to um, enjoy your own booze, watch your own football, regardless of uh, the outcome of what else of what in both, you know. Yeah. Very stress free, very great until I started sweating about the bird. So you know, I, I know what I did wrong, but but it just but it also I just start, you know I got mad and I was like this, this stupid turkey this shit isn't even good anyway you got to put all this cranberry sauce and gravy on it like you're out on turkey so now I'm out on turkey yeah 
Not not totally out. Right. Because we did buy some turkey for the week for lunch, and I was and it was from Central Market, and it was very garlic and herb crusted, and it was excellent. But again, you need a bunch of stuff on it in the form of a sandwich. It's a turkey is a vessel for other good tasting things. Much like most meat and anything else. Which is why it's not that hard to let it go, right? Right. Yeah. So, um, but I'm glad that. Uh, That's why, like we've talked about this earlier, but the beef tenderloin. What, there's nothing to there. I mean, there is some prep involved, but you're not gutting anything no, to no, get no, this no. thing much, tasty. much easier. Yes, right. yeah, yeah. And even chicken. I mean, chicken is better tasting than turkey all, all around. It's 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 purely tradition. Club Cool Podcast, not a turkey podcast. We're out on turkey. Um, so I agree. I think the turkey was good that we had. It was tasty. Yeah, but the, I'm putting gravy on it. Right, I'm yeah. I'm getting a little sweet potato in there. Yeah, get a little get your sides some, mixed in. There's, yes, there's, absolutely. You know, it's not just turkey. Yeah, yeah. with with a beef tender, you that's don't the need star. Shit. That's the star. That's the star. Yeah, exactly, exactly. How was that corn souffle? It was great. Yeah, that was the highlight. <laughs> My mom really knocked it out of the park again. Um, Laura's mom had the showstopper. It was the sweet potato casserole, mm. which might as well have been dessert. It was like was that this good. now now so I, I've previously discussed how I don't like the sweet potato casserole mm-hmm. the the one that is like the pureed mm-hmm. with marshmallows and such. So that's the, I believe that is what is typically referred to as yams, mm-hmm. candied yams, is the really like smooth processed mm-hmm. with the marshmallow on top. This like is that. this is a, this is more like a casserole. So it's got it it's it's um you ever had like mashed potatoes where there's like still a little bit of chunkiness to it? That right. It's like that, and the topping is the pecans, not the marshmallows. So my mom did that as well, knowing that I would be more keen to trying that. Yeah, because you're not a mo- you're not a mallow boy. That's correct, <laughs> and it was great. It was really good. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I hope everybody hope everybody's Thanksgiving went well, even if you did not get to uh, spend a little bit of time with family. Hopefully, hopefully you had had some type of nice meal, and uh, if it didn't include turkey, you didn't miss much. Um, <laughs> uh, another thing, uh, on to the next topic here. Post Thanksgiving, there's the the Black Friday Cyber Monday craze. Mm-hmm. It's it's the most overwhelming shopping time. It, it's 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 very weird for a sports shopper like myself. I get very flustered. There's so much out there, so many deals flying around. All the while, you're trying to decide what is actually going to just like go to the real sale but yeah. this month versus which of these deal wh- which of these are deals that you might not see again. Mm-hmm. Right, so I ended up with a few things. Uh, I'll, I'll just run through the first thing. The first thing we've upgraded the TV, Ooh. thanks to a Best Buy deal. Wow, what'd you go with? Got a, a 55 inch LG n- Nano Cell. Nano, that sounds. Imp- I I mean, it sounds it yeah. sounds great. <laughs> uh, you Which know what? Real, it's ha- that's it's half the battle is is getting a TV with a cool name. Yeah, our friend uh, Jordan mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. upgraded because he got the 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 gaming system. The PlayStation, whatever oh, the, the, the PS5, is. the PS5, yeah. hottest gift of the season. Yeah, and so the guy he bought it from was like, "You're gonna need a new TV. Okay, you gotta have 4K." <laughs> yeah. So he went and got the 4K. Okay, we checked it out last weekend. It's something. Mm-hmm. It's not the 4K. That it's the OLED. The OLED. The yes. OLED. So really right. something. So I did. I. I by the way, if you listen to both podcasts, but my other one and this one, sorry if you're hearing a double conversation, because I did explain earlier this week about my my new TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll make this as quick as possible. OLED is the best out there, mm. and really only LG makes it. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know what it does? No. Okay. So every other TV out there is what's called backlit. Uh-huh. And what that means is there's a light in the back, and it shines through all the pixels and the newer stuff, like this this one that I ended up with, which is called Full Array, can kind of like dim some spots and only shine light through certain pieces. Yes. But what the OLED does, it's not backlit at all. In fact, every single pixel on that yeah. screen is individually lit. And uh-huh. what that means is they can just turn off those pixels, resulting in what's called true black. D- this guy has done his I research. I did the research. Wow. So- that's that's the big that's the headline. That's what you get with OLED true is you black. get true black. So that was the selling point for plasma too. Whenever yes. we were buying our yes. TV, they said the plasma is the one that's going to really give you the true black. Give you the true blacks. And my dad was like the first out of the gates with the, the <laughs> first plasma that was ever released. Paid a fortune for it. <laughs> it was something. It is. It's really cool. It, when you see it, like if you watch some comparison videos or you go to Best Buy or Walmart or Target or wherever and you look at something that's showing you true black, you're it, you're like, oh. 
Yeah, you don't actually ever see black on your regular TVs. It's, it's like a dark gray, basically. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So OLEDs are the most approachable and the most price friendly that they've ever been. You could get one on sale this weekend for like anywhere between thirteen and eighteen hundred bucks for like a nice, mm-hmm. good sized one. And typically, those TVs have been more like four thousand dollars. Ooh, yeah. But I just decided it wasn't. It wasn't like. Am I really going to know the difference? Right. So I want to step down. I didn't didn't spend quite that You'll much. Be fine. The, Nanotech is from or Nanocell is from LG as well, and it's based on everything I read is the best emulation of the true black of the of what OLED does. Okay. So that that was the can't wait to hear about it. Yeah, that was the big Black Friday cop. Um, the true black. The, yeah, true black for Black Friday. There it is. Uh, I I finally picked up some Orslo denim from Canoe Club, the shop in Boulder that we've talked about before mm-hmm. that I really like. Those came in today. Uh, I don't have a full review yet. Okay. They're very they they're pretty dad genish. Yeah. So I'm not. I. We'll see. We'll see. Man, I've been you know. And I know that's I know that's a lot of this stuff looks dad genish right now. They like do. Dad jeans. But the, uh, I've seen more more ladies wearing the dad jeans. Yes. Yes. Totally. But mom jeans. But mom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole SNL sketch about mom uh-huh. jeans. That's, that's been... a great <laughs> sketch. I don't like um, them. So there. Yeah. You don't like what? I don't like that look. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. And I've on seen... on on the ladies. I think that it's just not there's nothing like flattering. Flattering. Right. Yeah, it's the... It it looks like you're you're trying to not I don't know. I I can't speak to ladies fashion, but this is a ladies um Yeah, you do yeah, we're hoodie we're, I'm wearing we're, right now. <laughs> we are uh I, I I thought about wearing leather today because I thought you might be in your leather because we're finally yeah. getting this leather weather. But I didn't. I went with fleece and you're in fleece too. So it's fleece <laughs> so now it's it's fleece weather instead. Um yeah, we might have yeah, to Yeah, this get thing like a... is obviously not built for a Adam's apple cuz when I do full <laughs> zip it's like uh-huh a little uncomfortable. But I love it. So, um yeah, I need I need a little bit more a little bit more te- testing with these things. But they look, you know, I love when I see these things in pictures. Um let's see if I can pull one up here. It's Canoe Club does great editorial work, great little photo shoots. So, you know, this is this is them. And like I love the way this looks here with this with this nice little fit put together. So I like the top. The top is awesome. Yeah, that's that Visfam Lamo shirt. Why didn't you get that? Because it's like a thousand dollars. But um, so that I I uh, I enjoyed. I did do some. I like to shop local if I can, and, yeah. and I don't necessarily mean it has to be Austin local, but like the little stores like Canoe Club and Boulder. Um, I discovered one that I wanted to give a shout out. It's called Whitmore. It's in LA. They got a really nice little collection of stuff. Uh, grabbed a pair of anon- anonymousism socks mm-hmm. and a uh, a piece of jewelry. Wow. And I won't, I'm not going to tell you what brand it is because it's something that I've actually listed on the Patreon before. Nice. And so, but that, so I, I, I scored that. And real quick aside, speaking of Patreon. Uh, I recorded a gift guide episode of Sunday Scaries yesterday with Will. It's coming mm-hmm. out on Sunday. And special treat, that episode, obviously free to go listen to, but everything that we put on our gift guides there on Sunday Scaries, that's I'm compiling it, putting together links, very easy, right there, patreon.com mm-hmm. slash club cool. So if you want the easiest and best way to just like see that list, have it on your computer screen, link straight to all the stuff that we talked about, Go check us out, patreon.com slash club cool. Um, our boy Pat, Pat Allen from Uniform, mm-hmm. he released some new stuff over the weekend and had a little 25% off going site wide. Saw that. Um, you would have known about If you didn't know about it, you would have if you had been in the Discord. Get go, in there. Go get in that Discord. Really good stuff, though. He finally released the, 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 the uh, further developed French Terry stuff. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed a pair of sweat shorts because I had to support the homies. Yeah. Was that the same material that he sent you the sample of? It was. That was nice. Yeah, it was super nice. Mm-hmm. And really, I mean, he didn't even have to offer that 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 nice little site wide discount. So I was happy to happy to pull trig there at a really yeah. really good price for the quality of his stuff. It's it's a lot of his a lot of the sizes have still are are selling out. But if you missed that, go check it out because it's really really quality basics. Um, Great for gifts too. I know it's it's hard to buy clothes for people, but basics like that, sweats, they might they pretty easy. All you really need to know is somebody's alpha size, 
And if you're not sure, go up one because this stuff fits fits uh, fits great if it's a little bit oversized as well. Um, yeah. So that's so so I'll report back on some of the on some of this stuff as I get it in. I also I you know I've been after uh, a pair of the Yucatan um, versions of the Birkenstock Boston slides. Mm-hmm. I'm all over the place with this Yucatan sizing. <clears throat> They got they they got it twisted. I'm 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 one ways up, one ways down. Mm-hmm. So I I this is the second time that I've tried a pair, and I got the sizing wrong again. Damn, how far are you going off here? So the first time I ordered what I thought I had determined was my usual size in Yucatan now, which is eight and a half, half size down from my like true size. They came in. It was they they were the wrong size altogether. It was not an eight and a half. It was a forty, which is a, a seven. That's like a U.S. seven. Yeah. But they weren't that far off from fitting. So this time I went up to the 41, which is actually a US 8. Mm-hmm. still too small. So I do need my true size 42. Hmm. Even though everything else I've had in Yucatan, I need to like a half size down is better. These so. don't have any buckles on them? No buckles. They're the... They're the, the, the clog. The clog, the clog mm-hmm. toe. Yeah. So uh, I think I'm going to be able to exchange. And hopefully hopefully third time's the charm. Yeah. Um, Phil, one more story for you today before we get into uh, our, our main topics. The dog, the six-month-old, five-and-a-half-month-old golden retriever puppy, Sunny, she finally got something good. She finally got something expensive. It happened this morning. Oh, she did? Yeah. Hang on. Let me guess. <laughs> You're not going to guess. It's pretty uh, pretty random. Okay. I was going to go with boots. Uh, yeah. No shoes. No shoes. But I had this. I have this really nice like waffle knit thermal. Navy blue. It's very rich. It's this really interesting blend. It's not just like a cotton. It's fr- it was from Barney's New York private label, so this thing is not replaceable. <laughs> it's very weighty and at the same time kind of slinky. It fits just really amazingly, like kind of cropped, but but fits great in the body. Loved the color. I just washed this thing. The care, uh, you know, you know me with the clothes. The care instructions on this one are very followed it to a T. Followed it to a T. Delicate wash, low spin. Dried it flat. I had the towel out on the bed. Spent the, you know, it dried for a day. Then I'm lint rolling it. Then I'm holy. Ha- I'm, shit. I'm hanging it to get the shape, and I finally it was ready to go back in the drawer. I had it folded up, sitting on top with with some other t-shirts. And unfortunately, it was on it was the top one. On the bed? No, no, no. On the on the hamper. On uh-huh. my hamper. Uh-huh. Uh, this morning, after Sonny's uh, breakfast and uh, post-breakfast pee-pee, um, she had s- semi-free reign to go into to a couple of different rooms <laughs> while, while, while I got that last hour of sleep. And when I woke up, she was in her bed with this thing, and like the shoulder was just like torn out of it. Ugh. That is something. Yeah. Wear it anyway. It's just No, no, it's no, it's it's gone. It's too destroyed. There's there was no fixing it. We need to see a picture. Okay. The people want to see the picture. <laughs> oh. Give it a proper burial. Okay. Let's see the the aftermath. We want to see the the damage. The the autopsy. Yeah. We want to see okay. the autopsy. Um so yeah. I I I thought I had made it. I thought I had made it through. No. Without something that I cared about getting ruined mm-hmm. didn't quite happen, but you know, every time it's a lesson learned. You just you you really can't be too careful with these things. The most with these annoying pets. thing that Poppy ever chewed up was remote controls. She went through three of them, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's not like that valuable. But still, you're out of remote. Yeah, you're out of business. That's true. You can't do anything these days with no remote. No. There's no walking up to the TV screen to, to, to <laughs> well, hit the channel button. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I think that ours might still have something on the back of it. No, but you but you can't, you, but can't, there's, yeah. you can't change the channel You're on, on like, the guide thing. Right. On the right. Uh, the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's only if you have cable. That's what I'm saying. If you're, uh-huh. if you're a cord cutter, you think you're SOL. Mm-hmm. You're anyway. back to the laptop. Yeah, um, there was there there was a an 18 East drop on Monday, and they do a collaboration with uh, with Standard Issue. Mm-hmm. They've got these great looking heavyweight thermals, and I I was all like I've wanted one. I missed on like the really earthy colors that they dropped earlier in the season. This time it was like a kind of a light fog gray that I wasn't really into, mm-hmm. and a in a dark navy that I loved. And I was like, oh no, but I got my navy thermal that I love. Ooh. 
So I passed. <laughs> Damn, man. I bet you were fuming. Yeah, it was, yeah. I, I, I yeah. Mm. yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's my fault. I left it where she could get it. But yeah. But it was it it was quite a uh, quite a disappointment. Those little razor puppy teeth, dude. And it's really weird because some some stuff she'll she'll carry off like that and get in the bed and mm-hmm. you know go to her bed, go to her little spot or whatever, and she just kind of gnaws a little bit. Yeah. In other stuff like today, she, she shreds. Just... She just tears it apart. Yeah. And so you never know what's which way she's going to go with that, which which makes it even even more difficult. Um. But yeah, th- so that 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 wraps up that wraps up my anecdotes. Uh, once again, check us out patreon.com slash club cool for that gift guide list. That episode drops on Sunday. Um, but um uh, might give you an early an early treat. Might drop the list tomorrow. Mm. No, I'll wait till the episode's out. All right. I don't want to scoop Will's scoop Will's story like that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> so look look for that next week. How about that? <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Be nice for you. Um, let's take a quick break, hear from a sponsor, and then when we come back, we'll talk Fear of God, George Clooney. And Drake. Today's podcast is brought to you by Bombas Socks. Maybe you haven't always thought of socks as the perfect gift or the perfect way to give back, but actually, Bombas Socks were made to give. Literally, when you give a pair of super comfortable Bombas Socks, you're not only giving someone a gift they'll love, you're also donating a specially designed pair to someone in need. Because for every pair of socks Bombas sells, they donate a pair to someone experiencing homelessness across the U.S., Socks are the number one most requested clothing item in homeless shelters. And that means the generosity of giving Bombas will make a meaningful impact this holiday season. Bombas are specially engineered to be the most comfortable pair of socks you and everyone on your gift list has ever worn. They spent years perfecting every detail, like eliminating those annoying toe seams, making sure their socks never slip, and creating a special midfoot support system. Phil, Yes. I'm gi- I'm giving socks this year. I actually just placed an order. Mm-hmm. I got you some running socks. I got me I, I got me some merino wool. Merino wool. That's just that's like uh it's like having a little it's like having a uh, a eucalyptus and hemp blanket on your feet because wow. it'll wrap it up, it'll keep it toasty, but it lets it breathe. Too. Yeah, they do let you breathe. Um you know I love the marls. I've talked about the marl socks before, and I got Laura some running socks as well. Whether you're doing sports whether you're cycling, they have specifically, uh, they've got socks that are designed specifically for tennis, for basketball, for running, for general activity, everything under the sun. There's the merino, there's the tie-dye, there's the snowboarding. If you are in need of socks, Bombas has you covered. They come in all sorts of different colors and styles. Anything you could want, mm-hmm. it's there. And let me just add, a lot of these places, you know, you're ordering, takes a while to ship. <clears throat> Bombas, they got- uh, Next day, they're Next they're day, it was road. crazy. Now, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not, I can't promise that. I'm just saying. Yeah. Bombas on top of their on, on top of their stuff here. Very consistent. Very consistent. We love their socks. They, Bomba socks are hundred percent backed for life. So if you or anyone you give them to isn't happy with them, just reach out to the customer happiness team, and they will issue an exchange or refund for you. At Bombas, great mission, great company. They give back. So from comfort to kindness and everything in between, Bombas aren't just givable. They were made to give. Go to bombas.com slash cool today and get 20% off of your first order. That is B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash cool. Bombas.com slash cool. Okay, Phil. Um, back on our bullshit here. Back Let's bullshit. start with this Fear of God 7th collection. They just recently unveiled this lookbook. Um, one thing that we've come to know about Fear of God, they don't they don't seem to stick to the schedule, to the fashion mm-hmm. schedule at all. So everything is just a numbered collection. There's not really ever any spring, summer versus fall, winter. Uh, you kind of don't even know how long a collection will last. Like seventh, the seventh collection could be, this could trickle out over the course of the next year, basically. And we might not see eight until maybe it'll be summer, maybe it'll be next winter. Not really sure with this type of stuff. So it's kind of all encompassing. Um, you'll see some spring or summer looks. You see some fall winter, heavy coat time stuff, uh, heavy coat type stuff. Excuse me. Uh, and I mean, it, this is a ginormous collection. There, are, I'm I'm here on the Fear of God website, cruising through the lookbook. Seventy looks overall. Uh, did you have any any initial thoughts or takeaways? Color, shape, silhouette, styling, uh, the garments themselves. What you got for me? Yeah, I like it. I mean. Cautiously like it. And none of this stuff would fit me. 
you know, we've said that before. It's all so oversized. It's all very oversized. But I love the um, very directional. There's not like they always do an amazing job of styling these lookbooks. Really good, and Re- I love the denim. I love the denim. I like the footwear. I'm assuming that's his. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Um, yeah, that's the Fear of God footwear. Um, a lot of it looks similar. So they they did the collection with Xenia, where they released some loafer mm-hmm, slipper mm-hmm. boat shoe looking stuff. And a lot of it looks like a continuation of the the silhouettes and the the shoes that we saw in that collaboration. I like, uh, you know, I guess look number twenty eight. That's a blazer. I think he has on. Um, <clears throat> anything yep. that's not like ultra oversized, I'm into. Yeah. And my favorite look of all, number seventy. Number seventy that he's wearing. <laughs> he's got the cardigan on. Uh, that Jerry has the, mm-hmm. the full kit on. Sweats and those uh, yeah. those little. I like a heel push down. When we were talking about house yeah. shoes, these this this a collapsible heel. I'm very I'm into that right now. I don't have anything that does that, but I I would I would like a, I would like something that did that. Uh, got some big puffer coats. Probably one of the only things I'm not super into. Mm-hmm. Just looks you know I I've, I've owned a cu- puffer coat like this that made me look like the Michelin Man. Yeah, and so it's just very hard to to uh-huh. to, to wrap my head get around that get back into that. But um, they are warm. They are very warm. Well, uh, and any of the plastic looking stuff I don't like. Like the real shiny? Yeah. The iridescent? It looks like one of those sw- those suits that you wear to really drop weight if you're a athlete. Yes. That, that I, I'm cruising through, the, through this collection and one thing that I do notice that stands out is how much I love the color palette. Yeah. Jerry always has great neutrals combined with denim, but I like the ca- the really, really nice beiges, khakis, and browns here, which I think always look fantastic with navy. And then you have the little kind of cream and, mm-hmm. and denim and black pop throughout. It, it, wonderful color story here. And yeah, then you get down to some of these looks in the 60s and he brought back the kind of iridescent shiny stuff, which I think he does because he feels like it's a hallmark of the brand at this point. It's something that they've done throughout the seasons. But I, he, he does some leather too, which I like. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't love it. Um, big takeaway, one of the big takeaways for me here is that you mentioned a blazer, and there is some suiting going on, some mm-hmm. some tailoring. <clears throat> the last time that suits were hot, were the hot, were one of the hottest things going. You know, you flip through GQ, and all the photo shoots are mm-hmm. are are dudes in suits, right? We think back to kind of 2010 to 2014 era hashtag menswear, yeah, very dandy, slim suits, tie bars, lapel pins, pocket squares. Crop pants, you know, funky socks or no socks, mm-hmm. that whole, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. You can picture the look. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, suits, very not popular at this point. Nobody wears a suit. Mm-mm. 2020 is going to be the first year of my adult life where I don't wear a suit a single time. Same. And as you start to think about tailoring and suiting, maybe making its way back to the forefront, you kind of have to imagine that it's not going to be the same as we saw it before. Mm-hmm. Everything <clears throat> swings. The pendulum swings. We're, we're relaxing the silhouettes of, of T-shirts and pants and, and casual and sportswear. So it would make sense that we start swinging back towards a little bit of that like 90s Armani, Friends, Seinfeld, <laughs> yeah. David Byrne, Talking Heads, like everything, you know? Yeah. Wider shoulders, slightly longer coats, looser pants. Um, and, and there's... Obviously, when this stuff kind of comes back to, to to eras of the past, it's always a little bit different. And in this case, you know, it, it it will probably not be quite as baggy. It will be a little bit more cleaned up. But but you'll get a little bit of that length back. They'll bring the double breast back, the bigger lapels, slightly more room. It won't be so nipped through the waist. And um, I I do look forward, even even if I don't participate a ton, to to some type of new suit styling, kind of make making its way back and i think that there will be an appetite for it after we all spend nominally a year and a half to two years with essentially nothing to wear a suit to Mm -hmm. so i i I, it's the it's probably going to be the right time you know what i mean Mm -hmm. i think it's i think we're poised for people wanting to get a little bit more dressed up um i have listed here on, on our rundown one that i had i had an eye on and we're not reinventing the wheel here. This is pretty basic. It's 
it's got more in common probably with the the last suiting era than it does with the new one. But I think I, I was looking at this and I was kind of digging it. One because it was styled well, very very mi- minimally mini- minimalistic mm-hmm. minimalistically. That's not a word. Sure. But just because it, it it it's a blank canvas. Yeah. It's a navy suit. It's not. It's it's clearly very casual, even though it has some structure to it. This does not look like a you know a wool J Crew mm-hmm. business interview suit, if you will. And I just got it. Got I don't know. Got my got my head racing about wearing suits. You know, it's a jacket and pants. What you could you wear a suit more casually in two years? Yeah. So that look gets a lot of heat, and I've tried to wear it, and I tried it on. And took it all off. The t- what I'm talking about is a tucked in basic tee underneath that. Underneath, yeah. And I felt like a, I looked like a douche. Yeah, I I hear you. I hear you. It and is... then, but and looking at this guy, it looks good. I know. So what is it about? What is it about this that's <clears throat> different than when we put it on? And I don't I don't quite know. Right. I'm sure it doesn't fit quite as well. Probably, maybe not. But I know you're. I know I have you're a suit that fit, I have a theory suit that looks just like this. You're either looking. You you feel like you look too. I don't know. Like you're in like a creative ad or something, <laughs> or or alternatively, yeah. like you look like you're in Night at the Roxbury. Yeah. With like the. Or you're trying. It kind of looks like you're suit. trying to pull off like a tech executive. Like I, I don't really care, but I'm gonna right. be a little bit professional for this meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I. I so. Yeah, all of this to say, I don't know. I still like it. This fear of God has me thinking about a moment in time in the near future where we are maybe reaching for like a baggier, looser blazer instead of a fleece or a leather or a you know a, a wax canvas. You know, any of the other kind of casual mm-hmm. jackets that we grab for, just kind of like here's my go-to. Can we? Well, other brands kind of follow suit. Will we push forward to to a moment where we're kind of grabbing that as a casual item? It might not happen. I'm just um, it's it. That's one of the things that this collection in particular is kind of making me think about. Do you ever do the hoodie under the blazer? No. Like look number one here. No. I like that look. I love it here, but that is real. That's the one that really ah. makes me think of South by Southwest guy. <laughs> Randy like yeah, that. like like black black rimmed glasses yes. and a hoodie lanyard and, and yeah yeah yeah. That's Fuck, the, dude! Now you yeah. got that in my head. But I'm still wearing it. I have a tweed jacket that is uh, it's too oversized now. Uh huh. That's perfect for this. It right. looks like that, but yeah. not quite as nice. So that that's the but the, right that's the difference here. Everything everything here. Th- this coat is so this this blazer is so specific. Yeah. That it works. Uh huh. What do you think that is? Cashmere. Probably. Um, and, and to get to this point, we definitely need the other brands to follow suit because all of this will be prohibitively expensive. Yes. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. Really good, good stuff here. I mean, like this, this chocolate brown is wonderful. I love the big lapels. Got a little Tom Ford kind of feel in here with some of that type stuff. Um, and then really, you know, a lot of classics, a lot of really wearable Mm -hmm. stuff like the canvas uh, jacket with the contrast collar <clears throat> love that he styles women and men in the same stuff yeah i was just about to say that. hit that one with the g uh 19 there you go that's that same jacket i believe yeah or coat yeah yeah this is like almost in between a top coat and a blazer yeah with the length and the boxiness <clears throat> and the double breast big ass lapels you ever owned anything double breasted yeah a- i have a double breasted blazer I got it when I was working at Barney's. It's a, mm-hmm. it's again. It's I, I mentioned that Barney's private label. It's it's Barney's brand, and it's mm. it's great. I have don't not let pu- Sunny near that thing. No, I will not. It's covered in plastic. I, I I'll have to pull that out. See how it fits. Mm-hmm. That's it's it's a weird. You know, you never know, especially with suiting. You think something fits. We talk about this. How like you know how we, Dude, how we it's shocking. How even st- it, it, this happens with stuff that you wear. Like, yeah, it's from season to season. You're like, I thought these fit. And then you look at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I hate this. Oh, man. With suits, especially. Suits, especially. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> I've had them all redone, the ones that I kept. Yeah. I've got like a Navy tuxedo. It's, you know, Express. It wasn't expensive. But I loved that thing. And last time I pulled it out, I was like, did I actually, did I wear this right. in public? 
cut like this? <laughs> so suiting is especially wild, the, the way that it kind of swings like that. And it, it, mm-hmm. yeah, you just, that's, that's where the tailors are really important is for, well, tailoring. Um, so yeah, I, I think some of this stuff is, is releasing pretty soon. Some of it might already be out on Essence. Uh, that, that's, uh, again, because of the way that he drops stuff, that's another weird thing. Like, you probably, you, would, you probably wouldn't even be able to put together some of these looks right now because four things are available. And then a few months down the line, oh, right. another four things yeah. will be available. And so I, I don't love that. It's probably like a cash flow thing. But... Yeah, de- de- every time he puts one of these out, the styling in the lookbook, always amazing. Always fun to pay attention to. And, uh, you know, get get in the Discord, get on the gram, at Club Cool Pod, let us know your thoughts. I'll, I'll post some of our some of our favorites here, and um, we can continue the conversation. Phil, you ready to move on? Yeah. All right, let's talk about, you want to go Clooney or you want to go Drake? All right, Clooney's fresh on my mind because I watched that story. Okay, was on, this on 60 Minutes? It's on Sunday morning. Sunday morning. Yeah. I saw the preview for this uh-huh. watching football on Sunday, or maybe it was Saturday. Uh-huh. And I saw that they were going to have this this clip of Clooney, George Clooney, talking about how he cuts his own hair with a product from an infomercial called a Floby. I don't buy it. I think he's been doing it during during lockdown, and he tried to sell that he's been doing this for years. Yeah, there's no way <laughs> that George Clooney. <laughs> Is going on the set of these movies with a Floby haircut. I'll tell you what I'd like to see, though. I'd love to get a look at the numbers on Floby's website oh, this week. Oh, for sure. Because they got they got to be moving mad look units. Look at that thing. They haven't updated that thing since it came out. <laughs> and now they're getting rid of all that back stock, dude. You have to be. Yeah. I, I mean, you probably could have... Look at this thing. 140 bucks. I bet you could have gotten one of these That's for a, 70 last the full week. Full kitten caboodle is 140. Yeah. You could be looking like Clooney. D- now, when he's saying all this, yeah. did you think to yourself, yeah, that kind of looks like a Floby haircut? His hair during the interview wasn't like pristine. Right. But it looked nice. You wouldn't have paid any attention to it had he not mentioned that he cuts his own hair. That's probably true. Let's see. Look at that with, with the beard. Right here? Yeah. Look at that. You don't think that's the Floby? No. <laughs> or that one next to it. Which one? This one? With the yellow background. Look how perfect that is. That could be Floby, though. That's not, that, that you know, there's, there's it's not. It's blended up on yeah, the sides. Yeah, I guess. This is the one that's definitely not a Floby that they have superimposed. Oh, yeah, where he's got it all. Uh, well, yeah, that, that, that requires far too much maintenance, and mm-hmm. you're not doing that with a Floby. But, um,. Yeah, it, 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 there's a whole bunch of angles here. Like, was he in? Is he in bed with Floby? Because you because this is definitely picking up sales. Here's the haircut. Yeah, yeah. see, the, I believe that this haircut was done right. with the Floby. Right. Well, yeah, this is during pandemic, and you know, it doesn't look like it's completely done by a professional. Right. I don't know. Th- this kind of, I'm trying to think of what this cut reminds me of. It's very. Look, it just speaks to to how handsome George Clooney is that he can make what kind of looks like a twenty dollar haircut look this good. Yeah, he's a great looking guy, and he's he's funny, dude. All these interviews are so engaging. That's why I yeah. think he's probably fucking with us. He's probably fucking with us a little bit. Yeah. What's the what is the cheapest haircut you've ever gotten? Uh, I'm sure there's been a fifteen or twenty dollar haircut. Okay. When I was a freshman in college, I went to the drag. There's a place, eight dollar haircuts in the window. Yeah, I got my head shaved. My, I got, I got, yeah. a, I got a buzz cut for eight bucks. Nice. It, it shouldn't cost more than eight bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you want it. It was an eight dollar buzz cut though. Yeah. I think I feel like you can go spend twenty five and you get like a little tapering, a little bit yeah. of cleaned up. Yeah. The the, the shape. I'm talking night. about one guard. Just done. Boom. Done. Yeah. Eight yeah. bucks. Right. See, I'm, we used to do that like. Freshman, sophomore year of high school, summertime, we're buzzing. Might be you even just dying. Doing, doing it to each other, right? Yeah. Just taking turns with the Clippers? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man. Should have had a Floby. If, if Floby is – if Floby did not know this was coming, I, I hope they were prepared. The website looks like it's prepared. It doesn't look like the website from the, the 90s. Doesn't look – did you see this thing? It kind of does. Uh, I <laughs> – Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't know. What are these hair spacers? Oh my god. What is a hair spacer? Why do you need a hair spacer? That's probably a patented piece. It, pro- it probably is. I can't get look. What I can't get past is the hose. Yeah, the fact that this great. thing is attached to a hose. I love it, man. <laughs> um. So. Final. That's ver- so bulky too. They obviously haven't updated it. The, the, I would be scared to have this thing near my head. Uh huh. Yeah, it might scalp you. Right. That's that's what I'm saying. So final verdict is that I'm not going to attempt the Floby haircut. No, but I would love to hear somebody who has. If we have any listeners out there that are are Floby loyalists, mm-hmm. please get in touch. Share your story. <laughs> so, yeah, old George in quarantine. Looks good. You know, new going. movie looks good. What's the new movie? I don't know. He's in outer space with like um with uh, Sandra Bullock? No. <laughs> <laughs> Some uh but part of some headline that I read some when I was kid. looking around on for George Clooney stuff, I, I can't even. Remember. It might have been the the CNN article that I had ju- that I had just pulled up. He gave fifteen million to friends while he was filming Gravity. I, I don't know. He, he, he like, gave a lot of people a million bucks. Okay. Yeah. What a what a guy. What a guy. George Clooney. Mm-hmm. It's funny because you know on this the this gift guide episode that I did with Will we had like we we each put on one thing on our list that was just like extravagant like absurdly expensive, and so I was then showing this item later to Laura and I, and we were basically talking about like who who gives this type of stuff mm-hmm. who could possibly afford to give mm-hmm. this type of stuff mm-hmm. well we settled on on like actors and actresses essentially mm-hmm. and not just anyone's. But you know, when we came up with like Jennifer Aniston, yeah, she could take one residual check, right, per week from the Friends reruns, and like buy everybody that she knows one of these items that I that I have on this list, and like it's you know not blank. I can't wait to see it. What it is? But um, the Neiman Marcus catalog always has some ridiculous stuff. In I'll it. I'll show it to you after the pod. Okay, it's phenomenal. Is it from the Neiman Marcus? Catalog? It is not. No. I recall one year they had like a helicopter in there. You can buy. <laughs> so, why not? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I need a friend that wants to gift me a million dollars, though, is the thing. I'm not that friend, my friend. Randy? No? Okay. You ready to uh, to talk about Drake? Sure. Guy has a new line with Nike. Mm-hmm. And it's not Drake times Nike. It is called Nocta. It has its own line. Nocta, based on his nocturnal creative experience, that's what that, that's what that stands for. What is that? Is that he he goes into a? I guess he likes to create. He likes to write and do stuff at night. In that big ass house in that giant Toronto. I don't believe he lives there. Yeah, that's <laughs> like a museum. <laughs> um, I forgot how many an, square. Was it like sixty thousand square feet or it's more? It's an art exhibit, dude. That's what that is. Yeah. It's a, like an architectural. I don't. Did Frank Lloyd Wright ever live at? At Falling Water or whatever, right, 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 right. you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe yeah. he did. Is that where the owl comes from? The owl with Drake. What? That's another. Oh, because he's because he's nocturnal. Yeah, probably. But what's the name of that line? October's very own OVO. Yeah. Wow. Good. Good job. OVO XO. So he's got his own line with Ni- with Nike now. They've never done this. Essentially, they've never given somebody their own line, named their own thing. Like essentially, with no, there's no Nike branding here. It's not Nocta by Nike. It's not Drake times Nike. It's not Drake, you know, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's Nocta. It's its own thing. That's the big news here. Is that this is the first time that they've ever essentially that they've ever gone this far with giving somebody their own line since Michael Jordan. And this is not and Kanye. A world class athlete. Well, that's well, Adidas. so exactly. That's the next piece of this yeah. is that this is this feels like they're trying to do their own Adidas Yeezy. Mm-hmm. Because Yeezy is again, there's there's on most of those sneakers on the product that was Yeezy by Adidas, there wasn't a lot of Adidas logoing or branding there. Mm-mm. And so that they are going there, they are going that direction with Drake. And it'll be interesting to see. I mm-hmm. I, I because Kanye's cachet, Kanye's ability to sell shoes came from the fact that he was like this style icon before he joined forces with mm-hmm. Nike. And so in Kanye's ability to like be a fashion trendsetter and like he wears something or talks about something and it sells out or he makes a shoe and it's like turns to gold like all that type of stuff. I, I it's not something that I'm I'm sure Drake can really replicate. No. Um, Although these these puffer jackets are nice. Ah, uh, more puffers, man. 
Yeah, the early preview is puffer jackets and sweatsuits in three different colors. It's all about the footwear. I would love to see what they have in the works for that. You're exactly right. It, this, I, I, this, this will. I don't and, care about any of this stuff. Yeah, and I and I, we'll see if they just launch. I mean, there was a Drake, there was a Drake collaboration with Nike a month or two ago that I think was had something to do with a new album that he's going to drop. But you're exactly right. Dropping this Nocta stuff, which is looks looks like three different colors of sweatsuits and puffers, will be a mistake if they don't drop shoes with it. Have to. They're 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 we got to see the shoes because, yeah. as we all know, that's what the that's what this shit boils down to. Mm-hmm. Can you move? Can you move a pair of hype sneakers? Yeah, exactly. And it better not have a bunch of Drake branding on it. Just make it a dope ass Nike shoe that doesn't have too much going on. And doesn't necessarily need the swoosh. I mean, we'll right? See. That's what I mean. Like, I'm not now, a big. You know, I'm now. I'm. I'm looking through at the at the marketing images, and there the the swoosh is included with this Nocta branding. So there's the Nike tie-in. But the fact that it doesn't say Nike, I guess, is still newsworthy. Mm-hmm. But the but the swoosh is there to to kind of to push it over the top and and make it clear that this is Nike produced product at the very end of the day. Um, so yeah, I, I need, I, I got to see the sneakers. Um, I will look forward to, to seeing what they come up with. He's had some success with, with Jordan collaborations, got some nice looking 12s and 10s mm-hmm. and maybe even a pair of 11s out there. I can't remember, but will certainly be interesting to see kind of how, how they, how they approach the footwear with him. I could see something resembling an Air Force One. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a shoe that, yeah. that he, that he wears. Yeah. And feels lifestyly. I don't think that they should go too performance heavy. Yeah, because that's the the Yeezy is so athleisure inspired. I feel like they need something more, more casual, more more forward, more fashion forward. You know what I really wish they would do is release some more React eighty sevens. Really interesting how they they went away from those. Went away. It's like they never. It's like they never existed. That's. Not cool. I guess those. I, love I, those. I, I guess the, the 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 peak for those, the original two, over two years ago now. That was 2018, I believe. Mm-hmm. So I, I figured I, that that would be a, a. I thought it was going to be a staple. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting that they that they, you know, the last few colorways that they produced of those ended up making pretty deep sale in mm-hmm. some places, mm-hmm. and they might have just pulled the plug. Yeah. They said we're putting these in the vault. We're not bringing them back for a while. Hmm. But I'll be waiting. Well, I mean, if there were colorways that you missed on that you liked, yeah, they're probably a, under retail on the various resale platforms. Yeah, so something to look into. Um, yeah. All right. Well, that's about all I got. Did you? you I, I I talked all about my Black Friday purchases. Did you Did you make any yourself? I forgot no, to I forgot I to re- ask you <laughs> because I'm just a rude host. You are. <laughs> no, I, I went all in on the on the leather, and then you what you did. You know that was a big one. Plus, you had your bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom. But we did some going? gift buying. Okay, we did some gift buying. So yeah, I, I, I'm I'm curious. I don't know how you usually appro- appro- approach Black Friday, Cyber Monday. A lot of people, it's like this is when I'm getting all my gifts. Other this people, f- it's like this is when I'm finding deals for myself. It was all about me previous to to this year. To this year. <laughs> <laughs> Good. That's, had, what I, yeah. that's what I like to hear. Right. Had those had those Francies been. In the the realm, uh-huh. I would have gone for them. Okay, but they're long gone. Yeah, in the vault. Um, and the new ones that they came out with. So, I were you know. buying gifts for family? Yeah, my my parents. Okay, that's really the only people we buy for these days. Yeah, yeah Ashley yeah. and I really don't even give gifts to each other. Well, so well, yeah. When we are, we're headed that route. The TV was our gift to each other. Right. Basically, this, it's all this come, year. for us. It's all in one pot anyway. If we want something, we'll usually just go get it. Yep. Yeah. So the but the, if there's yeah. a big sale, you know, you gotta you gotta you gotta pull trick. Yeah, gotta do it. Hold the phones for a second here. Yes, let's hold the phones. Is that an RG long sleeve tee you have on? No, it is not. Um, it is Patagonia. So we just ripped that right off of Patagonia. Yes, we did. Okay. <laughs> All right. I thought you were repping something old school RG in here. No, not to I. No. Okay. Looks good though. I had to clean all that out of my closet. <laughs> you did? Yeah. I bet you've got but, a back to back World War Champ shirt in there. I do. I... <laughs> You're waiting for the right day. Yeah, it's sitting right next to my um, uh, Running the World Since 1776 <laughs> t shirt. 
<laughs> <laughs> no, that, that would be like, I don't know, like, do you keep clothes that you have left over from an ex? No. Right? Like, you got to move on. You got you to gotta get that stuff. You got you to gotta cleanse the palate there. Yeah. So, no shade, but I, I just- You've moved on. I've moved on. Okay. Right. Right, All right exactly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, speaking of clothes at places that we work, mm-hmm. next week is the Fort Lonesome Howler Ooh, yeah. drop. Big drop. I might not even be supposed to. I might not even be just, uh, allowed to say wow. that. But I did. And I'm not I'm not editing it out. Well, let's so talk, you, if, let's if, talk if, semantics. Is it dropping on the website? If, you've, if you've stuck around uh, for this long in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you deserve a reward. One, thank you. And two, the, well, the, now you have a little tidbit. You know to be, you know to be prepped. Yeah, it should be it, uh, Tuesday in both of our stores and online, I think. Okay. Yeah. And there is a, there's some stuff that is it, our base product that has been custom embellished by Fort Lonesome. That's the little pricier stuff, very limited. I'm sure it will sell out very quickly. And then there's stuff that we have a little bit more inventory in. Um, there is a uh, kind of a, a, a printed button up that the print, the design we did in collaboration with Fort Lonesome. And there's a bandana with that same print and then a mm. couple of hats, which are really, really nice as well. So very looking very, very Man, forward, very news. much forward to that. Big news. Um, I think it'll be, I think it'll be quite successful and hopefully everybody thinks it's it's really rat. I'm sure it is, Barrett. Yeah. Got anything else to plug? Uh, talk no, about nothing. say. I've got nothing, man. Express, get off your chest. Mm, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, I don't. We're we're good. Okay. All right. Well, then we'll close it up. Uh, follow us at Club Cool Pod on Instagram. I'm Matt Barrett Dudley. Phil, uh, give him your give him your real estate your real estate one. Um, at Philip Battaglia Realtor. That's where all the hot content is. That's where the I've a, yeah. almost abandoned my other. Actually, I haven't, but Sad. I really would love to. <laughs> your your main account. My main account. Yeah, I just want to get rid or of your your personal media. account. Yeah, it's all about the business. It is. You know what? Here's something I want to get off my chest. <laughs> I tried to promote a post via that business account. Uh-huh, uh-huh. They they won't approve it. What's with this dude? Thing? That we when when Pat and I tried to promote the post for the the uniform slash club cool giveaway, it got it ran what? for like a day and then got de approved. What? Something. What is it? I do, I do not know. I don't I, understand. I don't know what boxes we're not. And checking. I don't care enough to really look into it. Although I, I keep trying, but they want you to hit like a generic audience that they come up with that's supposed to be like your followers Mm -hmm. which i don't i'd rather branch out and find yeah you want to find other followers right you don't want to hang out with the with 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 these people no no i appreciate these people you're finding new new i need new people too (laughs) that's the whole point of promoting it i I don't know i i really don't know and it just all i got it bothers me and i don't want to give facebook money anyways right it always upsets me when i remember that instagram is technically facebook and i hate it I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Uh, thanks. Thanks. I hate it. Um, so yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. It's very tempting though because they make it so easy. To, they do to go it's, through it's and extremely easy. Select your. Well, if anybody knows the algorithm and how to work it, I you know I would love a little tutorial. Oh, I actually did. I meant to mention these two. Um, new city editions NBA, the Rockets one. Shouts to H Town. I'm really feeling it. Have you seen them? No. What, what, how about Westbrook? Bye bye. I love it. You love it. I, I what one of my least favorite players in the NBA. Yeah. The Rockets keep ending up with players that I hate. I, mm-hmm. I do I never like Dwight Howard. Never like Russell Westbrook. So I'm very very happy. How we about got, Wall? We got like John Wall? Wall and Boogie back together. Yeah. They're gonna hit all the strip clubs. They're gonna be at Treasures with James Harden. <laughs> it's gonna be great. They're gonna be doing the Dougie together. Harden staying? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, we're in. We're in. I'm back in on this team. The trade it 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 sucked me back in. Mm-hmm. Harden loves a strip club. I was right, yes. Uh, and then and then I I I hate our red and white jerseys. Like they're just I just think they're trash. Uh huh. Not the throwbacks. Those are dope. No, the throwbacks are awesome. But I've uh, but our regular main jerseys, they're not good. Yeah, those are cool. You're talking about the blue ones, the new. But ones, the, right? yes, these new Oilers inspired colors with the H Town. Mm-hmm. I was looking for an excuse. Now you're gonna now, now now that we are that we're keeping Harden, 
and we got rid of Russ. We brought in John Wall. We brought in Boogie. Now I can cop. Now, now, nice. yeah. All right. So those are cool. I'm in, yes, I'm into these. They've been getting some hate, but I, I'm, I'm, I love. I'd love to see you in the full kit. I'm gonna get the full kit, and I'm gonna mm-hmm. wear it with the jersey tucked in. Yes. No shirt underneath. High socks. Yeah, and I just, it's just it's, it'll be you'll just mistake me for for uh-huh. a guy that's playing on the court. There's a dude at the gym that wears stuff at the like summit that. full kits. Yeah. Yeah. Of basketball teams. Yeah, and then works out. Oh shoot! It's you guys can't good. you guys can't see my email like Ooh. that. Ooh. <laughs> what was in there? All right, that'll wrap it up for us today. Uh, go <laughs> check us out, out Randy. <laughs> <laughs> patreon.com slash club cool check out our wonderful sponsor bombas for all your sock needs bombas.com slash cool 20 percent off your order i, I we're gonna I, I can't wait to, to get our order in i'll show off our yeah. socks we'll come in just in socks just in so- socks bomba socks with the full <laughs> with the full city edition kit <laughs> all right we'll see you guys soon see ya bye-bye